quote, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. The true neighbor will risk his position, his prestige, and even his life for the welfare of others. Good afternoon, everyone. I am honored and privileged to be invited to speak with you all. I really appreciate this opportunity. It being Dr. Martha Luther King Jr. Day, it's important to reflect on our history and the struggles of the BIPOC community, Black and Indigenous people of color have gone through and are still going through. This is the civil rights movement that was brought to light because of MLK. The University of Wisconsin-Madison mentioned that the importance of history is, quote, the past teaches us about the present, unquote. Understanding the efforts towards the ongoing civil rights movement can help us understand and respect our community and the different communities around us. Because this day calls for a day of learning of our past, it's imperative to recall and recap Dr. King's legacy of his fight against racial segregation and injustice, and his fight to help those towards those in poverty peacefully. As we can all recall, Dr. King was known for organizing and promoting peaceful protests. But here's a list of things that he has done. He was one of the people to found the African-American Civil Rights Movement. He helped organize the Montgomery bus boycott to stand up for those who experienced a similar situation to Rosa Parks. He worked against segregation from Georgia and Alabama all the way to housing segregation in Chicago. He delivered his famous motivational great speech, I Had a Dream, during the March of Washington in 1963. He also led the March of 1965, also known as the Selma March or Bloody Sunday, which was known as a turning point for the African-American civil rights movement, which was used to advocate for African-Americans to vote. And this is what led to the Voting Rights Act. He also supported those who were in poverty in America and planned to start the Poor People's Campaign, which was less known. The reason we continue to educate ourselves on this history is that equality for POC has still not been achieved in neither a systematic setting nor a community-based one. There is still much work to do regarding POC's civil and economic standpoints. Now, how do we reposition this information to support our civic community? To understand this, we need to go into depth of our current civic economic situation. In my personal view, this is our society's enormous challenge, diversity increasing in our communities. We are not merely learning to live with this diversity, but adjusting and learning with the ever increasing diversity of our communities with each passing year. My biggest worries are poverty, hunger, the lack of education, the lack of health facilities, and the other lacks of basic necessities of life. And that can complicate the challenge of pluralism within diverse communities. For that reason, I began to involve heavily in a philanthropic path. I chose to be part of a solution by helping children locally and globally with basic necessities of life. My journey of helping others started when I was seven years old and has never stopped since then. In 2017, finally, I was able to give reality to one of my dreams, which was to start my own nonprofit organization called Sonia's Hope for Children. Sonia's Hope for Children is a student-led nonprofit organization committed to children helping children, especially in a diverse setting. We run 12 to 13 different projects a year including our school supply drive, book drive, our Christmas bag project, and our winter clothes drive, which is our current drive, are just to name a few. We strongly believe that every child deserves basic human rights, like food, shelter, clothes, safety, and education. To conclude all of this, each one of us has to learn to increase our capacity for compromise in our diverse community more than a little sense of patience. 
need an appropriate degree of humility, a good measure of forgiveness, and, of course, a genuine welcoming of human differences. Going back to how we can take our past into our present, the answer is that we need to be civically engaged and active. And that can mean a multitude of things, small and large. Here's to name a few. One way is to encourage people to vote for more BIPOC in government, to have more POC voices in our community. If you're looking to be more active in volunteerism, volunteering, fundraising, or donating to less funded cities with more diverse communities can be a way. Or you can simply help people in your own community with daily life activities they may struggle with. There are multiple different ways to be civically engaged, and that was just a couple of them. But now, the new question is, how will you be civically active? I am humbled today to be able to speak to all of you. Thank you for your time, and soon I'll be open to questions. I would like to end with another one of my favorite quotes from Dr. King. Quote, let us rise up tonight with the greater readiness. Let us stand with a greater determination. And let us move on in these powerful days, these days of challenge, to make America what it ought to be. We have an opportunity to make America a better nation." Unquote. Thank you and God bless you all.